Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. Teachers undergo educational technology training. Members of the public urged to take special care of the more vulnerable in the society and home caregivers undergo sensitization training workshop. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the national response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has decided to undertake the third term of school online. In preparation for the reopening of school scheduled for April 20, 2020 and to ensure an online environment conducive to learning and teaching, teachers underwent training workshops to enhance their capabilities. More in this report. The COVID-19 pandemic has pushed schools and learning professionals to transform quickly from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning. The Ministry of Education has been providing educational technology training, with the most recent being Edmodo training for primary school teachers in all districts. The Edmodo network enables teachers to share content, distribute quizzes, assignments, and manage communication with students, colleagues, and parents. Jermaine Anthony, Curriculum Specialist at the Ministry of Education, noted that the reception from teachers has been positive. I think the reception has been amazing, that the teachers were very happy. They thought that the, the um, training was relevant to, to what they were doing mm -hmm. or, or their needs as, as um, professionals in the teaching um, system, um, teaching profession. They, they thought that many, I think about 60% of them were saying that they wanted additional time Okay. Um, additional support. Um, definitely they were pleased with um, the presenters that we had for the training, the facilitators. And by the way, I want to mention, I want to just say that the presenters we've had, um, we could not have done, you know, a fraction of what we've been, what we've been able to achieve this year without them. Anthony explained that the focus of the third school term will be revising material to cater for any gaps in online learning. To the teachers as well, we and as much as we anticipate that, you know, we have to make that transition, COVID-19 or not, we have to make that transition so that teachers can leverage technologies in the way they um, support instruction. Um, we are not expecting miracles to happen overnight. And so what we've um, started to do and we are continuing to do is to train teachers and support teachers so that they are able to use um, some of the online learning platforms, e-learning platforms, whatever you call them, so that they have that option in their toolkit that they're able to use um, technologies like Edmodo, like Google Classroom, like Moodle, so that they would be able to give instructional support for the time being. Anthony reaffirmed that the Ministry of Education will continue to support teachers as they continue to use technology integration to enhance the educational environment. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Parliament to be convened on Tuesday, April 21, 2020, where the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Alan Chastney, will present the motion seeking that Parliament extend for an additional period commencing from the 27th of April 2020 and ending on the 31st day of May 2020 in accordance with Section 17.6 of the Constitution of St. Lucia, Cap 1.0. The Constitution of St. Lucia Resolution of Parliament approving Declaration of State of Emergency passed as Statutory Instrument No. 40 of 2020 that approved the State of Emergency that was published in the Gazette on the 23rd day of March 2020 as Statutory Instrument No. 39 of 2020 containing a declaration that a public emergency has arisen as a result of the occurrence of the 2019 NCOV, an infectious disease commonly known as COVID-19, for a further period of 26 days, commencing from the 31st day of March 2020 and ending on the 26th day of April 2020. Two bills are also to be laid, that is the National Insurance Corporation Amendment Bill by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service that seeks to put in place the structure and stipulations for the Economic Relief Program and payouts. 
A tourism stimulus and investment amendment bill will be laid by the Honorable Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries. Members of the public are urged to take special precautions when interacting with the elderly as they are more likely to be adversely affected by COVID-19. Family case worker at the Division of Human Services Elder Care Unit, Andrea Alcid, who recently appeared on the national television network, the Information Command Center for the National Response to COVID-19, called on the public to refrain from going to visit the elderly and instead utilize the available mediums to communicate with loved ones so as to prevent the transmission of the virus. Details in this report. People with underlying diseases and older people are especially vulnerable to severe illness, more so in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The elderly, especially those with pre-existing medical conditions such as heart disease, lung disease, diabetes or cancer, are more likely to have severe coronavirus infections than any other age groups. Family case worker at the Division of Human Services Elder Care Unit, Andrea Alcid, encourages the public to take extra precautionary measures if caring for an older loved one. The basic thing is try your best to keep them at home. At home is the safest place. Keep them at home, keep them informed, because as much as they're older persons, they need to be in the know of what's going on. So keep them informed, let them have factual information, not the hearsay, but let them have factual information. Avoid visitors, the same practices, the same hygiene practices that we've been taught and told to, to do on several occasions. We teach them the same, we remind them of the same, and most importantly, just try to keep them safe, keep them comfortable. Alcid encouraged the public to practice social distancing and utilize the various technological mediums to stay connected with their elderly loved ones. What we can do for those older persons who are tech savvy the constant video calling, the WhatsApp calling. For those who don't, call them at least twice, three times a day. Have the neighbor shout them or go to see them but stay outside and have the conversation from a distance. That can help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just have them call us whenever they feel like talking. So there we have to ensure that you know we're able to provide that service to them, that access to them so we, they can reach us whenever possible. Just to say, hello, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling sick, this is getting me miserable, when will this be over? And they will ask you the regular questions and it's okay to answer them a million times. Ms. Alcid noted that the Division of Human Services has been paying special attention and enforcing safety protocols to protect the more vulnerable older people in the society. Ensure that the residential units, like the, the homes, the senior homes, Marion Home, Comfort Bay, that they follow protocol in keeping the distance, in doing the washing of the hands, all of that. And we need to pay special attention to those who are at risk, those who are, who are ill, who have medical conditions, ensure that they, their medication is, is available, they eat on time, they've been showered and cared for on time. All the people who have cognitive challenges like mental health challenges, ensure that they have their medication, ensure that they take their medication, ensure that if there are any signs of a relapse that you know who to call, what time to call, what to do. Alcid urged the public to focus on the maintenance of standard recommendations to prevent the spread of the infection. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. La main propre c'est chemin bonne santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tenir bonne santé. Quand même si vous pas négligez si ten, vous ça fait ces bagages là. Écoutez, laver la main souvent et puis glos net avec savon après condition qui cas si main vermine. Par exemple, on est pour laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas. Servi pas vite. Ou tu peux monde qui blessé et ben malade. Après vous tu peux animaux et après vous entamer zordi. Et si vous pas Pour sa service, sa yo kakouye hand sanitizer et be alcohol pour 30 secondes. Lavez les mains souvent. Ça c'est yon manière pour empêcher maladie. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, priez bureau information santé à numéro 468-6349. Welcome back. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Health and Wellness conducted a sensitization workshop for home caregivers throughout the island. More in this report. The sensitization session was geared towards residential caregivers from various organizations such as Home for the Elderly, the Boys Training Center, 
Women's Support Center and Transit Homes. It provided an opportunity for health officials not only to provide an overview of COVID-19, but to sensitize those providing services to the more vulnerable of the population, particularly the elderly and persons with chronic medical conditions in one residential space. Another component of the session was to review and adapt infection prevention and control guidelines at the various organizations to reduce the potential risk of transmission of COVID-19 within these facilities. Senior Counselor at the Boys Training Center, Patrick Ferron, highlighted the importance of such a session given the need for accurate and factual information so as to combat COVID-19. We have actually started the process already using information that is substantiated to work alongside our uh, persons that we're serving. Now, in coming together as a team now, we're actually adding to what we have been using so far, and it will just help us to improve or to continue to find the best practices with certain things that are actually changing as one day moves on and another day comes. Administrator at the St. Lucie's Home, Sylvester Phillip, emphasized the timeliness of the session. The seminar today was, um, in a sense, very informative, um, very interactive, and a lot of uh, minute details were gone through. And um, I'm very happy that um, I, I have participated in, in the workshop. The information that I have acquired will be passed on to my caregivers. In fact, I wasn't here alone. I was here also here with my, the residential manager and one of my senior staff members. We will get together and we will disseminate the information to our community, communities. When I say communities, I mean our caregivers, um, people who come, general public, and whoever who require that kind of information to enable us to overcome, you know, whatever problems that we may have as it relates to COVID-19. Bearing in mind what has transpired in other countries with COVID-19 outbreaks, where transmission in similar facilities resulted in poor health outcomes, early preparedness is necessary so as to prevent similar events in St. Lucia. The session for caregivers was organized by the Department of Health and Wellness. Cabot St. Lucia made a donation of 50,000 EC dollars to the government and people of St. Lucia to help fund essential resources for health service and frontline staff as well as to provide support to residents across the island. The COVID-19 pandemic is having significant impact on lives and livelihoods across the globe, challenging the resources of large and small economies alike. St. Lucia is no exception, and Cabot St. Lucia sees it as imperative to join in the fight and do its part. Jules Kwan-Dua, Vice President of Sales and Marketing, stated, quote, One of Cabot's guiding principles has always been supporting the communities in which we operate. This is an unprecedented time, and we are grateful to be able to contribute to the COVID-19 relief efforts in St. Lucia, unquote. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's novel, A Quayol. Monsieur Tan, General, Monsieur Madame, Département qui veut ça pour information en gouvernement de la GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale PIA NTN, qui a une nouvelle en créole. Présente Primus Hutchinson. Commencez la semaine ici. Programme Lisson l'école pour les étudiants qui a commencé. Mais comme ça, ce n'est pas à l'école comme des habitudes, mais à CAI comme ministère de l'éducation déjà informé en ces jours qui passent. Le ministère de l'Éducation a informé les parents et les gardiens pour les étudiants qui ont l'école première ex secondaire au lieu d'un pays cette ci qui ont un approchement qui a embrassé plusieurs façons de restrictions que j'ai trouvé établies par conséquence des situations maladie corona. Alors, toute leçon pour ces étudiants là a commencé lundi le 20 avril 2020. Conseil, tout parent et gardien, j'ai trouvé une notification que les étudiants ne peuvent pas retourner à l'établissement de l'école pour le troisième thème de l'école étienne. C'est divers l'école qui a fait contact et puis les parents en référence pour ces leçons pour les enfants. Ça, c'est une pièce question et bien information ou désir pour trouver concerné l'école en particulier. 
pour ça faire changement de communication et puis les autorités l'école ça là en même du temps ces instructions qui s'étaient dit ni briser j'ai déjà préparé par les instructeurs ça veut dire teacher c'est l'école ça là et que les parents ça a marché papier des leçons ça là a commencé lundi le 20 pour vendredi le 25 avril à 8 ça c'est à 8 heures bon matin pour midi après midi à ces diverses écoles qui ces enfants ça là qui a assisté ministre de l'éducation qui a continué pour conseiller les parents et gardiens pour suivre ces recommandations des protocoles covid-19 pour faire assurer yo exemples pour protéger la main en façon de purification car service sanitaire pour une distance sociale à peu près 6 pieds de l'un à l'autre à toutes les et pour toujours ni à sous ces masques là là qu'a quitté caillou ça veut dire ni pour les masques en fait caillou là qu'a quitté caillou pour aller pour venir côté en parlant de ça il y a un spécialiste des affaires lycée l'école qui a embrassé la technologie à collège à Arfelus, M. German Anthony, expliquait que le programme de l'école de l'école à Kaye, c'est un qui est indicateur déjà formé dans une façon qui a facilité l'étude pour tous les étudiants. Selon Anthony, Anthony remarque que si l'école de l'école, comme il est déjà informé, Kaye a sur computer et Internet, côté de ces étudiants qui ont conduit l'école pour ces étudiants à l'école là. Mais Anthony qui a fait, les parents savent que ce n'est pas un côté de étudiant qui est né pour acide depuis 9 heures bon matin pour juste 3 heures après midi pour suivre ces leçons. Ça, ça nous a espéré que ces étudiants qui ont fait ces travail en teasing travail pour faire. Donc, ils ont fait un homework en bail pour faire la caillou pour tenir vous occupé. Par le temps, il y a eu la à l'école, il y a eu toujours. Aussi, nous avons eu la à communiquer avec ses teachers, si il y a eu une question, si il y a eu une difficulté, il y a eu des teachers qui ont eu des matin à 10h, il y a eu des portes. C'est ça que nous lui fait. Ces teachers qui nous ont traînés, nous ont engagés, il y a aussi eu des choses qui fait ça depuis le 20. L'Evoni pour l'examination Common Entrance, c'est un qui les est officier ministère de l'Éducation qui a discuté très sérieux parce que c'est un qui est très important pour assurer qu'il y a un ordre avant de implémenter. M. Anthony a déclaré que pour l'examination CXI, un changement j'ai en place. Mais pour CXI, nous savons que CXI a um, continué, mais il a envoyé. Um, qui m'a même changé mm -hmm. en, en finissement juillet, moi, quoi? Oui, oui. So, nous avons espéré, même si CXC si, si, a marché comme um, peut-être sans problème, mais il a été plus tard, et nous avons espéré peut-être ces résultats qui viennent plus, plus tard, et, et ça a fait le risque de regarder de quelle manière ils jouent toujours, mm -hmm. qui performent ces um, um, moments-là, ce so, qu'ils savent peut-être de quelle manière ils ont commencé à enregistrer. Um, peut-être en septembre et bien octobre. Les instituteurs qui continué pour recevoir étonnement pour apprendre à ces façons pour instruire les étudiants à ce computer pendant leur enquête qui suivent les sons pour thème nouveau de l'école. Au vrai que ce que ça pour l'éducation des technologies, Royston Emmanuel fait comprendre qu'il faut se tirer à l'école, ça c'est les instituteurs, confortable et puis façon de communication nouveau ça là et bien ces instructions nouveau ça là et qu'a servi comme tuteur pour instruire et dit qu'il initiative ça là qu'a facilité pour les instructeurs développer une relation en façon des instructions et puis les étudiants pendant le cahier pour suivre les sur l'école nous avons travaillé avec le ministère pour, pour préparer les teachers pour ça. Et pour, 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 pour une manière de aider ces parents pour comprendre de quelle manière okay, ils ont servi ces bails avec ces mamans. Ok? Un chai parole, nous avons entendu un chai parole, mais nous ne pouvons pas parler de um, ces parents et de ce qu'ils ont besoin pour qu'ils bien aider ces mamans. Oui. La la caillou, à la caillou, à la caillou, à la caillou, à la caillou, Oui, c'est là où il y a eu le caillou à prendre. Avec M. Bidam, ça c'est côté de notre nouvelle, nous pouvons dire là. Moi, quand même, M. Autant, pour regarder, 
Je vais vous donner une pour que vous encore si bien. Quand vous la vie, vous allez présenter une autre nouvelle à Koyol. À présent, c'est le moment de vous présenter au Chanel. Merci à Pill Primus. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority wishes to advise the public that all residents will continue to receive a one residential waste collection per week until advised otherwise. Regular collection will only be undertaken on the first collection day of each week. If your first collection day is normally Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, you will receive collection only on that day. Bulk waste collection will remain suspended until further notice. All are encouraged to adhere to the new schedules in order to maintain clean communities. The Department of Labor wishes to inform all farm workers scheduled to travel to Canada for the 2020-2021 season to contact the staff of the employment unit via email or telephone. Farm workers are asked to call one of the following telephone numbers between 8.30 and 4 p.m. 722-0681, 720-1936, 720-1937, 720-1937 or 716-0857. Farm workers are also advised to contact the office via email address employment.unit at govt.lc. The farm workers are asked to contact the department without any delays as there are urgent matters to be discussed. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.